Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. If you've been on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube lately, you've probably seen people using citrus strip to etch tumblers that have been painted. So I thought, let's take this method a bit further. So I have nine different things, including tumblers, but other things that you can use the citrus strip method on. So I'm going to test a ton of different blanks and show you the results. Everything from like a canteen to a bread box. This is like a compost bin. You could use the same technique on basically powder coated metal surfaces. I would make sure that you use like powder coated stainless or powder coated galvanized unless you want like the front to rust. For a rustic look on a bucket, maybe you do want it to rust, <laughs> but like a powder coated metal bucket that's made out of galvanized material would probably work with this method. Now I'm using so many different blanks that there are gonna be like some tricks to using different types of blanks because not all blanks are gonna be the same and not all paints are gonna be the same. So the first thing we're gonna do is run a test. If your blank, say like this water bottle, has a bottom, you can actually run a test on the bottom to kind of see, is, it, is this method gonna work? How long is it gonna take? Because each thing you try is might just be a little bit different. So let's take a look at the supplies we're gonna use and run a test. The supplies you'll need are as follows. So you'll need your citrus strip. This is the only thing that I am testing. So it's citrus strip brand stripping gel. Now there are other brands, there are other types of citrus strip. You can definitely test those, but this is the only one that I'll be using. Painter's tape, Cricut stencil vinyl and transfer tape. You can substitute regular permanent vinyl for the Cricut stencil film if you would like. I personally like the stencil film, but a vinyl will work. Scraper, weeding tool, scissors. You also might find some tools handy when getting the paint off. So a dry washcloth or a piece of an old towel works great. These are some tools I like. So the first is this little weeding tool and it has this looped end that I like to use. Then these two come in a set and although they're metal, the ends are kind of rounded, which makes them nice. They don't scratch as easily. And then this is just a wood skewer from the kitchen. And I actually like this dull end for getting the paint off. So these are a few options. You can obviously try different things and pick the tools that work best for you. And then powder coated items. Like I said at the beginning of this, I'm gonna test lots of different items. Tumblers, this one's a coffee mug. This is a bottle opener. We're gonna test lots of things and see if the citrus strip method will work on these. So first let's take a look at how you would test to see if citrus strip would work on any object without ruining it. So let's take a look at the test. I went ahead and cut a bunch of stencils, including the ones for testing. So for testing, I kind of like a circle inside of a circle. And then these other ones are the various ones that I'm gonna try on my projects themselves if my tests work, of course. Now to cut this stencil film, I do have another video on that and I will link to that below. It's very simple, it's just like cutting vinyl, but as you can see, we kind of did a reverse weeding. So you wanna remove everything that you want to be etched. And then the other thing you might wanna do is move your items around on the mat before you cut. This leaves as much area as possible around each of these so that you have more room around it when applying to your surface. And then additionally, we will apply painter's tape around that outside edge. So let's remove some of these circles and I'll show you how to use those for testing. Once these are cut and weeded, we can just trim away the ones we need. Leave as much area as possible around each one. And I'm just going to remove some of these circles for my tests. So again, I like the circle within a circle just to make sure that the citrus strip will actually work on my project. And the size of these is completely up to you. I just made them small enough. We're gonna do this on the bottom of our project if possible. And I just made them small enough where it would work on the bottom. To test your item, you'll wanna turn it over to the bottom, back, something that is not going to matter for your final project. Now you only have to do the testing once. So let's say I'm gonna do several tumblers. I would only test once. This is to get an idea of if it will work and how long does the stripping take. So I'm just gonna use a piece of transfer tape, put that over my stencil, burnish well from the front, burnish well from the back, and then peel back 
a carrier sheet from my stencil film and then apply that circle on a flat place on this bottom surface. So hopefully I can find a flat area where my circle will fit. And then we are going to press this down really, really well. And it does have some ridges on this bottom, so I'm just gonna press it as well as I can into those. And you probably don't wanna get it too close to the edge here because the citrus strip might fall over the edge. With your vinyl or stencil film applied, just use a heat gun or a blow dryer. So this is a very low temp heat gun. Run over it for about 10 seconds. After you run over the area with your heat gun or blow dryer, so low temp heat gun or blow dryer, about 10 seconds, then that vinyl is going to be really good at, and pliable so you can go around any edges and get it really stuck down, removing any bubbles from the surface. So you should find that that makes it a little bit easier to get your stencil down. And then once it's applied and down well, you've burnished everything, then we're gonna add painter's tape all the way around. Now, if this wasn't the bottom, I would probably cover this entire thing with the painter's tape, but I just wanna make sure that I don't drip over the edge here while I'm making my project and ruin what I'm trying to test here. So I'm just gonna put it around my little stencil and then we can start using the citrus strip on this test area. So now you wanna put on some protective gloves, shake your citrus strip well, and put it in some kind of container that is not gonna be affected by paint stripper. So I put it in a glass container and I'm using these paint brushes I had that are like throwaway paint brushes, or you could use um, one of those like sponge brushes that are really cheap, just something that you can throw away afterwards because you won't wanna use this again. So then we're just gonna apply this really, really thick layer, and then you're gonna set a timer. I would start checking this at around 30 minutes and then check in 15 minute increments. What you're looking for is what time works for the specific blank you're using. It could be anywhere probably from 60 to 90 minutes most likely, but it could be 30 and it could be two hours or more. So I recommend to go ahead and start testing that and to test that after about 30 minutes, I'll just kind of move the citrus strip around use something like my waiting hook to poke into the paint to see if I think that it is going to peel easily. You're looking for paint that looks like it's gonna peel up pretty easily. So let me go ahead and allow this to sit and then we'll take a look at a test that's been completed. So here's one of my tests and I've just been occasionally testing it. So just pulling that back, seeing if the paint is removing. And this one seems to be removing pretty good. Now don't be fooled, some of these have multiple layers of paint, so be sure you're getting all the way down to the metal when you check. So this one looks like it's ready. So for the video, I'm just going to remove everything with a wipe. You can take it to the sink, rinse it out. And then I like to scrub it with the stencil on first and get as much of that paint off as possible, then remove the stencil. So you can see the paint is just coming off and I'm just using that dry washcloth and everything's coming off. And I'm just gonna get the edges as good as I can with the stencil still on. Your stencil might start to lift up at this point. If it does, that's okay. All right, once everything is as good as I can get it, then I'm gonna go ahead and remove the stencil and the painter's tape and take a look at what I have. Now I'll make notes about the time that it took for this to work. So for this water bottle, it was about 90 minutes for me until the product was ready, but just keep checking back, like I said. And so now I have a really good idea of what I need to do to get this right on the surface itself. So I do like to run the test on the bottom if possible, so I understand what to do so it is correct when I do it on the front and I don't ruin my blank. And now that we've ran that test and we kind of know what we're doing here, let's actually try to strip something. So we're gonna use the same method as we used to test, but actually make a stencil 
that has a design instead of just that circle that we use for our testing procedure. But we are gonna do it in the same way. So we'll cut the stencil film with our Cricut machine, then apply it to the surface with some transfer tape. Again, we're gonna burnish it down really well, cover all the excess areas with some painter's tape, and even use a heat gun on the stencil film itself to make sure it's really good and down on the surface. Remember about 10 seconds over that stencil will get it nice and hot and you'll be able to push it down and push all that air out and get a really good bond with the surface itself. Then you just apply that citrus strip. Again, you wanna cover the stencil completely, not leaving any areas. So I like the rule of thumb that you shouldn't be able to see the stencil through the citrus strip. So a really good, nice, thick coat. All right, if you're gonna do a tumbler of any type, you will need to hold it still. So it's round, it's gonna roll around. I just use, so this is popsicle sticks, three of them taped together. I have like an old piece of paper here. It's actually like a thicker cardstock. And then I just sort of arrange the popsicle sticks where this is not gonna roll. Lift this up and then just tape these down to the paper so they're not gonna move. I'll put my tumbler right in there. It'll hold it from moving. And then I can add the citrus strip to the tumbler in the same way as I did the bottle opener that you just saw. So this is just the way to keep everything from moving. So now I'll put this down. Nothing's gonna move. I can go ahead and add the citrus strip on top of the stencil in this case. So that's one way to keep your tumbler still. They do make holders and things for that, but if you don't have one, there's one hack for you. Now the citrus strip does kind of self level after you like pile it up. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna level itself out on the surface. That means there's gonna be some drips. So this has been sitting about 30 minutes or so. And if I start to like move this around, I can tell that that paint is just coming right off. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the citrus strip. Again, you can take this to a sink, but for the ease of the video, I'm just gonna kind of wipe it off. Now I recommend getting as much off as possible with the stencil still on, because especially this, this one here that had the shiny paint surface, that paint can actually sort of scuff up as you rub it the paint that you don't have the strip on. So I want to make sure that I get as much of this off as possible. And if I just scrub hard, it will just start peeling off. And it just peels off in the area where my stencil is located. But if I get as much of that off as possible before removing the stencil, I have the best results. So that looks pretty good and I'm just going to wet it down once again. Make sure I get all those little pieces off. And you can rub it more after you remove the stencil. And then we'll remove that stencil off and take a look at our project. All right, so let's take a look at these two. This is the first one I did. And I removed the stencil before I started scrubbing the paint. And hopefully you can see there are just some areas that are like dull areas. So it's like, across as I was rubbing, the paint sort of dulled in those surfaces. So then I did another one, and this time I removed as much paint as I could before I took that stencil off, and this one is stunning. So I would say that that method worked best for me, just scrubbing as much as I could off before I took the stencil off, just in case the paint was that gummy consistency and left like streaks like this. It most often happened with this shiny paint that's smooth, but it could happen on any of them, I feel like. Some paint surfaces, they're multiple layers, and this happens most often with like the smooth, shiny paints. They sort of turn gummy once the citrus strip does its job. Now, yes, you can scrape down to bare metal, so I went ahead and removed the citrus strip from this one. However, when you try to remove the paint itself, it just leaves sort of a gummy layer. And use a magic eraser and try to get that off. But I do find that sometimes it doesn't go all the way down to bare metal, especially if there are several layers. That's where that wooden skewer comes in. So I love to use the dull end of the wooden skewer and just sort of burnish that paint off using a magic eraser every now and again to kind of wipe it away. I get as much as I can off with the stencil still on. This is another one of those cases where the paint will leave streaks if you do not do it this way. Then you can remove the stencil and you have something that at least most of the paint is off. Then I went ahead and used that skewer again, like two or three more times over the surface. This is as good as I was able to get this one. Now, I could go over it many, many more times, 
burnishing with that skewer and cleaning up these lines. However, I do want you to realize that these are quite a bit of work. So anything with like a shiny, smooth surface might be like this. Let's take a look at another like water bottle that I ran into that it was rough paint that I had trouble getting the paint off of as well. So I wanted to show this one because you see it looks fine here. And when we get down here, I couldn't get the paint off of this area. So with this paint, the purple seemed to come off fine. And when I did my test to see if this was ready, I scraped just in a few areas up here. So this is a lesson. Scrape several different places with your tool while the citrus trip is still on to make sure all the paint is gonna remove fine. This one probably would have been fine if I had left it another 30 minutes or so. To let this E, part of this D, part of this L sit some more, then it probably would have came right off. So kind of a lesson learned on this one. Be sure that your paint comes off in all areas. And this was another one, this paint, up at the H got a little gummy and I had to use my magic eraser. This in the middle was fine with just like the dry washcloth and just scrubbing over the top. And then this down here, I can't even get it off by with a metal scraper. Like it's really, really stuck. So this one, it's like it had a different amount of paint depending on where it was on the water bottle. So you might look for that when you're doing your projects. One more mistake on this one. So as you're scrubbing your paint off, be sure to pay attention to what your bottle is sitting on. So as I was scrubbing this off, some of the paint was on my surface and it actually stained this water bottle. I can't get this off at all. So that's just something to pay attention to, the cleanliness of your surface, because as you're scrubbing that paint off, it will go everywhere. Like this is a very messy project and you don't want to leave marks on the back of your project as well, especially with something like a water bottle. Here's another lesson I learned. So when I made my stencils, I wanted to fit as many stencils as possible on my sheet when I cut. That was a mistake. I should have left as much area as possible around even if I was wasting stencil material because my painter's tape leaked in a few cases and hopefully you can see right in here on this pink, it's just discolored a little bit where the citrus strip went under the painter's tape just a little bit. I have a few of those. Now, I mean, if you weren't looking, you might not notice, but I would definitely say if you could make your stencil larger. So put the stencil in the middle of a sheet, something like that, where the stencil would come like all the way down here, all the way down here and fit to the edges of this. It would probably be better than using painter's tape. So lesson learned there. So here are several projects that were a success that I really liked. So this is a tumbler. Here is like a little canteen. And then this one is a wine glass. And this one is a coffee mug. So I loved that I was able to get like even super small details on these projects. So I really love the way a lot of those turned out and I think they look amazing. I'm kind of in love with this method actually. And yes, I even did this bread box. So there are tons of different things that you can make with the citrus strip etching method. Just look for things that are powder coated and metal. So overall, I am in love with this method. I do think it makes a gorgeous, gorgeous project. And I like all the possibilities that I was able to create and how there's even more possibilities on Amazon. So I will link to all of the blanks I used as well as the files I used in the description below this video. If you're on computer, scroll down, click show more. If you're on mobile, swipe up on the video or click the arrow to expand the description depending on how you're watching. Then you can get a full list of everything I used and give some of these blanks a try for yourself. Now, as I showed you, some worked way better than others. I did wanna encourage you, really wait for the citrus strip to do its job. It could be up to two hours, like seriously. So like the bottle opener here is like a 30 minute wait, but like some of these tumblers, this water bottle, this tumbler, it was two hours and definitely this little bucket. It was two hours and I probably could have went more and as you saw on the water bottle, definitely could have went more on that bottom. So you definitely wanna let it do its job. Not just when the paint scrapes off, but it's literally falling off as you run that scraper across. That's when you wanna stop the process. If you stop it too early, so just when it's barely scraping off, you're going to scrub for a very, very long time trying to get that paint off. If you wait until the paint is literally just falling off, it will scrub away fairly easily and you'll have a project in less time. Now, like I said, some of these with the shiny slick paint, 
the paint itself was sort of gummy when I tried to rub it away. I don't think you're gonna get away from that. So I think it's gonna be gummy regardless. So again, use those methods I showed. Use the magic eraser, use the skewer, the blunt end to scrape it away, the magic eraser to wipe the rest. Be sure to leave that stencil on. On any of these, I, in my opinion, leave the stencil on until you've rubbed as much of the paint away as you can. If the stencil starts to come up, that's fine. However, I felt it was better to leave the stencil on and let it catch some of that all that paint debris, like you just get paint everywhere. The other thing is this is messy, very, very messy. Protect your work surface. And then the second thing is safety. This is a paint stripper. It is a chemical. Protect yourself, protect your hands. If you have respiratory problems or you feel like you need to do this project outside. I did it inside filming a video, but I went ahead and opened the window in my craft space just to get some fresh air and ventilation. So that's generally what I do, but if you feel better, you can either do it outside or wear a respirator as you craft. This, no matter how great it is, like it's citrus strip, so it kind of smells citrusy. No matter how great the smell is, still a chemical and you still need to use all the precautions that are on the bottle when you're handling it and working with it in any space that you choose to work with this material. So now all that's left to determine is what you are going to try this method on. So I hope you got some really great ideas for using this method on tumblers, yes, but wine glasses, bottle openers, canteens, water bottles, mugs, bread boxes, buckets that are compost holders, Tons of different ideas, and I'm sure that you can come up with even more. If you see something that's powder coated, metal, give Citrus Strip a try. So I gave you the idea at the beginning to test before you actually ruin your entire blank. So first of all, if you can, I would definitely test it. If it's a blank you can't test, you can definitely try the method, but be aware that this is permanent. Like there is no putting the paint back on. So if you ruin that blank, the only thing left to do would be to like strip the entire thing and like repaint it or add vinyl, something like that to cover up your mistake, but you can't really add the paint back if you mess up the blank itself. So I like the testing method if I can get by with it. And yes, most of my first projects will have that little circle on the bottom, but that's okay with me. I don't mind the circle and it is enough for me to test that first piece to know that I can get the stencil itself correct the first time and not ruin an entire blank that I spent my money on. So I hope this helps you. If it did, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about this method of Cricut crafting, just drop down in the comment section and ask away. I will say that Citrus Strip is the only stripper that I tried. I don't know about any other stripper brands or any brands in other countries. I am not able to test all the brands on this one, but I do know that this works. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week, and trust me, you don't want to miss any of those. So thank you guys so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.